Services. Um, Representative Scott, you suggested earlier that students are suffering from the rising costs. Um, in, in, in what universe will this do anything to lower the cost of education? It will lower the, it will improve access because they will be able to pay, well, they're in the mess because we haven't kept up with access. Like I said, when- uh, but, but how does it lower the cost of tuition? How does it lower the it cost of education? It doesn't cost, uh, the, it doesn't lower the cost of education. It, 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 it just forgives a loan. That's right, because- right. which and, doesn't and, lower and, the and, cost and, of education. And, and you want to note why the cost to the student is so much. When um, in the 1970s, the Pell Grant covered 80% of the cost of going to college, and now it's less than a third, and people are still trying to go to college. Well, <clears throat> well stated differently, uh, why is tuition so much higher today than it used to be? On a relative basis to all other goods and services, the cost of education has gone up exponentially relative to the cost of well, all other goods and services with the exception of health care. Why is that? I, I don't know why, but it is. But, and, and you're telling students... Uh, but there are economic they, principles at stake. Why is the cost of education exponentially higher today than virtually every other good and service except for health care? Well, I, you're going to have to ask the college administrators why the cost of college is so high, but the problem Ch that students have is they got to pay it. Chairman Fox, do you have an answer to why you believe the cost of education is so much higher, exponentially higher than all other goods and services? Well, I, I think it's because we, the federal government subsidizes education. Let me give you an example. The more federal aid and generous loan subsidies that we give out, the higher go the prices of tuition. For example, for every $1 increase in student loan subsidies, colleges increase their tuition 60 cents. So we know that the more money you put out there, the, the, the more the colleges and universities are going to charge. Increased availability of graduate loans led institutions to increase their cost of attendance dollar for dollar with no evidence that such loans led to increases in accessibility and enrollment of disadvantaged students. Colleges reduced their own grant aid by as much as 83 cents for every dollar students receive in taxpayer student aid. Let me ask you another question, uh, Chairman Fox. I heard earlier that this is similar to a PPP loan. Now, I take issue with that characterization because whatever one thinks of the CARES Act, I have massive problems with the CARES Act and it's $2 trillion of inflation causing spending and paying people not to work and the absolute absurdity of the way it was structured. But let's put that aside for now. You have a CARES Act that included a PPP, which included provisions in it, which was designed somewhat not perfectly, but designed to do what? To keep people working to provide goods and services to American people Be when their government was shutting them down. So would you agree with me that, that is more analogous to a taking, a takings under our constitutional jurisprudence and, and history uh, than it is some sort of policy choice about what you're doing with respect to loan forgiveness or, 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 or tax policy, right? Exactly. You're, you have the power of the federal government, the power of state government, the power of local government shutting down people's livelihood, entirely shutting them down. Correct. So you're a restaurant in Richmond, Virginia, Austin, Texas, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, shut down because Anthony Fauci waved his magic wand and said, must shut down, must wear masks, must do all this stuff because I'm boy genius. Right. And all these people out there working who built up a livelihood, had a business, built it up from scratch, passed it down to their kids, they lose their entire livelihood. The same as if you took a highway and bulldozed it. Exactly. Like a taking. So a PPP loan, it was a loan, right, that would be forgiven if certain criteria were met. And what were those criteria to the best of the chairwoman's recollection? Well, that they kept everybody employed and they stayed open and they did the things that were out there in the loan. Now, in the student loan issue, we are giving to the people who took out this trillion dollars in loans, and we're transferring the debt to somebody else. The people who owe Correct. this money willingly took it out, 
to get make more money by going to college. Not the same as what the federal government did, as you said, in shutting people down. It was a taking of their business. So question there. My wife uh, was the daughter of a single mom, had very little resources. Her mom worked multiple jobs in order to get her through school and to get her to be able to go to the place of going to college. Because her mom didn't go to college, and she wanted that for her daughter as a single mom. And uh, my wife performed very well in school and had the choice to go to schools such as Duke, which cost a lot of money, or some Ivy League options she had that cost a whole lot of money. She chose to go to Texas A&M University. I think that was a good choice for a variety of other reasons that I won't get into at the moment. But she decided to go to Texas A&M, mostly because it was financially more viable and she would take on less debt. Now, my wife, nevertheless, took on about 50 something thousand dollars of debt to get through her undergraduate education on top of having worked two jobs through school in order to pay her way through school. She then matriculated and then went to the University of Texas where we met at, the, at law school. She took out student loans at the University of Texas. So at the time of our marriage, she had over $100,000 of loans. Now, she is at the tail end of still paying for those loans. After 20 years, our 20-year law school reunion was last month. So 20 years later, she has sacrificed, drove a 2000 Corolla with no options for years after years after years. Drove, you know, a crappy car while watching all these other people riding around in their fancy car, making tough choices, making to tough choices about where to live, what to do, what to do with her kids, making sacrifices so her kids could go to the school that she thought was appropriate, literally sacrificing. I've sat there with her in tears, dealing with what we have to deal with in a family budget. And she did that. She worked hard. Her brother did that. Now, none of that's getting paid off because she already paid her loans off. I took out some loans. I had to pay my loans off. So my question is, for the 87% of Americans who don't have the student loans in question, for the person who paid off their loans like my wife, for the plumber in San Marcos, Texas, busting his rear end right now and started a business from scratch, didn't take out a loan, what do we tell him? What do we tell my wife? When the federal government comes in and writes a check for half a trillion dollars to say, here's, in the words of my colleague on the other side of the aisle, just a little $10,000 for you, because we're gonna write a check with money we don't have, with printed money. What do we tell the person who worked their whole life to pay off those loans? Chairwoman Fox. Well, some people might say you're a sucker for having done it. That's what they'd say. But you're getting nothing. You're getting nothing. You played by the rules. You did it the right way. And you're getting nothing. Too bad. Chairman Scott, what would you say to my wife who did uh, played you know, by the I rules? Would, I would say the same thing you would say to somebody that didn't pay off a PPP loan, a million dollars. You got people, members of the House, got a million dollars to help their businesses. That is a, that is a uh, deft deflection. Why don't you that, take that, that up it, with, the, with the members well, of the House? who didn't pay the loans that you have and, an issue with. What same, would you say to my wife? Say, say, say the same thing. To the, what do you to, say to, to my the, wife? To the 80% to the, to the people who didn't, to the 99% that didn't get benefits. What do you say to my wife, who spent her whole life paying her loan off? Too bad? Too bad? You didn't get the $10,000 check? Well, I'd say the same thing. It's not, it's not perfectly equitable. You're absolutely right. Perfectly it's, it's, equitable. Okay. It's literally a check to 13% right. of Americans so that some people right. can pat themselves on the back in the false name of compassion while you're destroying the work ethic of the country. We, we, I mean, how is it are, remotely equitable to take money no, no, and to go minute, pay off a loan? You are, you have no problem with equity with a tax benefit twice as big going to the top 1% in corporations. No problem with equity at all. No problem with the million dollars. Uh, people wait, wait, hold loans. on. Make that statement again. Now, what do you say to the, no, hold on. Say Make to that the, statement what, again. What do you say to the 99% of the people didn't get PPP loans? The people who got the PPP loans were people who applied oh. for loans to keep businesses afloat, oh. which was the legislation that my Democratic colleagues helped jam through as a part of the CARES Act in a panic over COVID. 
I wasn't the one that was chomping at the bit to jam the I CARES Act through. I didn't get a PPP loan. I didn't get a million dollar PPP loan. Right, but everybody in this freaking building voted to jam that through. That's right. Right. And so the PPP loans existed. Why? To and try to keep businesses afloat but that were getting we, shut down by the power of and, government. And we, had, and we had to help people. We had uh, unemployment compensation. Right, unemployment but, but we were trying to keep businesses afloat. And, 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 and yes, it was abused. Shocker of all shocks. Okay. A government program of billions of dollars got abused Everybody, by some people. Everybody's not going to benefit from this proposal. You're right. But, but how is it that we can just choose, hey, we didn't here's choose. a check? How do you choose... On a PPP loan. Everybody didn't get because a million you, dollar PPP loan. Because you create a policy where you allow people to apply who have businesses who are shut down. That's how. Now, I, again, not a huge uh, proponent of the entire CARES Act structure. Right. We tried to fix okay, PPP okay. Well, on the back end. you don't have any problem with somebody getting a million dollar PPP loan and not paying it back? No, it I got a, a huge problem with that. That's why was, I don't like was, government it, programs it, in it, the it, first it, place. It, it was I hate them. And you got a problem with somebody trying, trying to pay off their student debt? And the, and the chairman, the ranking member, sorry, is making a great case for why we shouldn't have all these programs in the first place that get abused by no, people no, that should have been, the government it wouldn't power. Be, we wouldn't be in the situation if the programs had been as they had been originally uh, planned. Wait, wait, more the, government where the Pell, subsidies where for the more Pell government Grant programs. the Pell Grant covered 80% of the benefit of, of, going, of going to... Um, uh, do a state college. Does Chairman Fox, have a, you said you had something you wanted now to add to that? Now it's the third. And you expect people to be going to college. Now, there's some of us think going to college is a good thing and ought to be available to everybody. Well, actually, now, I, now, I, mean, now, I, would, I, know, I know that's controversial around I, here. I've got a thought on that in a second, but would the chairwoman have a, a thought on this question? Well, yes, I do. There, I have two thoughts. Number one, PP loans were a part of legislation, right. as you have pointed out. Right. This loan forgiveness has never been voted on by Congress. Not. This is illegal. The power of the purse belongs to Congress. It does not belong to the president. So, so that is, a, the other thing I would say is when there's an argument about Pell Grants, I read the Constitution and nowhere in the Constitution do I read you're guaranteed a certain amount of money to go to college. In fact, the word education isn't in there at all. But what the, what the Declaration of Independence tells us is we're guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. We're not to have it dumped in our lap. To the gentlelady's point, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask the gentlelady if she remembers this quote. People think the President of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone. He can delay. But he does not have that power. That has to be an act of Congress, end quote. Do you remember who said that? Nancy Pelosi. Speaker Pelosi. Do you know what else she said? Quote, suppose your child just decided they, at this time, do not want to go to college, but you're paying taxes to forgive somebody else's obligations. She continued, you may not be happy about that, end quote. Wow. Speaker Pelosi, all of a sudden, an extreme MAGA Republican. Uh, how about Representative Pappas, who said, quote, but this announcement by President Biden is no way to make policy and sidesteps Congress and our oversight and fiscal responsibilities. He continued, quote, any plan to address student, student debt should go through the legislative process, end quote. Another uh, extreme MAGA Republican, or, or, or is that a Democrat, Representative Pappas? that's a Democrat. And Representative Golden from Maine, quote, this decision by the president is out of touch with what the majority of the American people want from the White House, which is leadership to address the most ba the immediate challenges the country is facing. The president should be taking action to reduce inflationary pressures. With this move, he potentially makes them worse. It is out of step with the needs and values of working class Americans, end quote. Again, extreme MAGA Republican, Representative Golden from Maine. Does that sound right? Do you remember these quotes? Yes, sir. Uh, Chairwoman? Um, you know, one other point here is this question about that everyone should be able to get a college education if they want to. Well, first of all, does the gentlelady agree that you may join ROTC or join the military? I understand they're having some recruiting problems for reasons we could talk about in another hearing, about another topic, about the decisions being made by the brass at the Pentagon. But you could join the military or ROTC and get part or all of your college paid for. Would it surprise the gentlelady that, according to a poll commissioned, uh, conducted by Mission Roll Call, 6,202 veterans 
76% said they disapprove of the push to forgive student loan debt for those who haven't served in the military. Would that you surprise the gentleman lady? Gentlemen, yield surprise. quickly. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a time management question. Yes. I'm not trying to cut anybody off, but we're going to finish our last two questioners so you can be dismissed. Otherwise, we'll have to bring the witnesses back. I will wind up in two minutes. Uh, I, well, can we, can we go vote? We're going to have to recess anyway. You've got to recess. Oh, well, then we're going to have to recess now, and then we come back and we can okay. resume. All right. Uh, I would, uh, the committee stands in recess. I'd remind our witnesses, if you could, there's three votes. You cast your third vote. If you come back, we'll start as soon as you get back here. Same uh, advice, obviously, the members of the committee. With that, we're in recess. In consideration of H.R. 467, S.J. Res. 11, and H.J. Res. 45. Uh, when we recessed, Mr. Roy was... Uh, uh, Questioning, so will the gentleman from Texas is recognized to resume his questions. I think, Chairman, I know we're on uh, time here, and I said I'd be a couple more minutes. I'll leave it at that. I just I, I wanted to just close with what I was saying to the to the chairwoman about the quotes from the military guys who've been quote you know interviewed and said, well, why why are we doing this when I went and sacrificed and did all that I was going to do to put my life on the line for this country and, and get those benefits? Here's a quote uh, from one Marine Corps veteran. In an op-ed from Fox, uh, Cole Lyle, quote, I joined the Marine Corps two weeks out of high school, deployed to Afghanistan, earned my degree using the GI Bill. I know firsthand the sacrifice service members made to earn that benefit. They all made a choice. In most cases, joining the military meant receiving the GI Bill and the chance to go to school for little to no cost. They earned that opportunity. I assume the chairwoman agrees, and I'll leave it at this, agrees that, um, you know, that is another reason why this is a, a massive problem. In addition to the final point, that were we to actually be successful with this CRA and the president signed it into law, or were we to pass the debt ceiling bill that we've already passed and signed into law, ending this program, that we would save immediately almost half a trillion dollars in 2023 deficit spending. Is that right? That is correct. And, and what's going to happen again is if we're not able to stop these programs, the increase in the debt and inflation are going to continue to go up. This is very. This is a very inflationary measure. In addition to adding to the debt, which we know adds to inflation. Well, I think the general lady. I just want to remind, state again: we would immediately, immediately save almost half a trillion dollars in 2023 deficit if we were to pass this CRA, and/or if we were to pass the debt ceiling bill that Republicans responsibly passed. A few weeks ago, and the president and, has ignored. I and yield if back. I, if I could I, make I, one more comment, I appreciate your bringing up the GI Bill that anybody who joins the military can get a free education. But you know, this business of of education being unattainable in this country is a straw dog, because most anybody in this country right now can get an education without going into debt. Uh, the many are like your wife they face that decision mm -hmm. whether to go to a very expensive school mm -hmm. or one that's affordable. More affordable, right. Or it, right now, most states are offering the opportunity to get a free um, uh, AA degree, AAS degree, while still in high school. And many students are doing that. And then others can work their way through college. But access is not an issue in this country. Who pays for the college education can be an issue, but a person can get through college without any debt whatsoever. I also appreciate that from the gentlelady and would also posit that uh, anybody graduating in high school right now, you're going to do a lot better off if you go get your welding certificate, your plumbing certificate, start a business, and don't go to school and go get a degree in gender studies. I yield back. A uh, gentlelady from Indiana's Rick. Hey, before you click on the next video, if y'all could do me a big favor and hit that like button. The algorithm loves it, and so do I, because it helps promote these videos and get the message out about what our government has been doing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications, because every time I put out a video, you want to know about it, right? Thanks again, and have a good one. See you on the next one. Peace.